Many of you asked me for right this. So here it comes. German sour beef. Sauerbraten. Hi folks, welcome back to my kitchen here in Munich, Germany. Today I'm cooking Sauerbraten. It's sour beef and it's one of the most traditional German things and I'm really happy to do it because um, it really reminds me of happy days in my childhood. But I haven't cooked it for years, don't ask me why. I needed your impact, your wishes to put it back in my mind and to put it on my list of what I want to cook here in Class Kitchen. So uh, I will do that now and I show you what we need. We need one and a half kilo of beef and I have prepared this three days ago. Um, I've put this in a mixture of red wine vinegar, red wine, um, Spices are with pepper, bay leaves, juniper berries and cloves. Um, later on I will pan fry it and put it in the oven. For that I need some uh, soup greens and lard. And finally for the sauce there are different, different optional things because we have so many different ways in Germany how to prepare it. We can use raisins, we can use pumpernickel, a very dark bread, or and we can use heavy cream and of course we need salt and pepper. Sauerbraten is definitely a national German thing. You have it in like every area, but you have it sort of different in most of the areas. Um, in the northwestern part near the Stadt Aachen, um, there you take Printen, that is a special local cookie and you use it to thicken the sauce. In other areas you have, um, as I showed you, Pumpernickel, this dark um, northern German bread to thicken the sauce and in the Rhine area around Cologne you take the raisins for the sauce. And um, don't worry, uh, you can also use um, heavy cream or cornstarch and uh, thicken the sauce the way you want to. Okay, first of all, I start with uh, cutting these things very roughly because later on they come into my sauce to flavor it. You can do this already when you pre-prepare it. Um, so you can also let the vegetables get into your marinade, but I haven't done that. I don't think that really matters. Now when I'm pan frying it and putting it in the oven, they are releasing their flavors very well. Like you would do it with any other thing you put in the oven. Okay. Let's heat the pan some lard into it. This is some, what they call in Germany, some butter lard. So regular lard, not a goose lard or anything. Now comes a part that's a little bit tricky because I have to take the meat out of here and dry it. I'm not wasting too much of the liquid because this liquid later on will be my sauce. I take out the juniper berries and the cloves that I find easily and the bay leaves because I just wanted them to marinate but I don't need them in the sauce later on. Here we go. Isn't that a wonderful piece of beef? Wow. Take a look at the color. I have had it for three and a half days in my marinade. It has become really, really dark. Here's some more cloves and bay leaves. One thing about the marinade, which is not absolutely necessary, but I do it in this recipe. Um, after cooling down, I add 100 to 200 milliliters of port. And uh, the sweet richness of the port makes it even more interesting. So if you have one, add it. This has a wonderful color. And the marinade with the red wine has gone deep into the into the beef and it 
smells intensely like red wine. That is wonderful. That is right the way I want to have it. I will not cut off all these fat things because fat is quite good for the taste in the end. Okay, let's put it in the frying pan now. I would just shortly pan fry it from every side so it closes its structure and um, it caramelizes a little and then I add my, my soup greens, my marinade and then it goes in the oven. Okay, this is the last side. I can add all the vegetables now. Okay. Oh. Mm. It's smelling wonderfully right now. So it's just starting to cook. Okay. At the end of the pan frying, I add my marinade. And I let this get some heat and start to boil. And then I will put it in the oven. This goes into the oven at 160 degrees Celsius with the circulating air for at least two and a half hours. And from time to time I will open it and uh, take some liquid and pour it over the beef. Sauerbraten was in fact one of my favorite dishes when I was a child because my grandmother always made Sauerbraten for me with potato dumplings and uh, with uh, mashed apples. And that was so fantastic. She made the sauce, by the way, with heavy cream. And I really liked that. She never put raisins in it. Hmm. I wonder. Okay, let's have a look. Oh. Smell is fantastic. Have a look at that. Mmm. That looks good. Okay. Now I put the meat aside and I care about the sauce. The meat has to rest anyway. Mm, this is tender and soft. Oh, it feels like I have to take care that it doesn't fall apart. Well, just carrying it around. Okay. I don't need the vegetables anymore. I just want to have the sauce. So I put all this to the seed. There we are. This goes in the rubbish. Here's the base for my sauce. That's the point now where you have all the regional differences and I have decided myself to take two particular things today um, which are very regional. The one thing is the raisins and the other thing is the dark bread, the pumpernickel to um, improve the consistency of the sauce. I make crumbles and put them in the sauce while the sauce starts cooking again. And so the crumbles might solve a little. It's good. And in the end, I will I will work with uh, some heavy cream, just um, because my grandma always did, and I really liked it. I like to have this sauce with uh, heavy cream. Okay, here are my raisins. I put them in there as well. The reason why you have uh, raisins in this sauce is very simple because um, the marinade is quite sour 
the meat now, after marinating for at least three, three days, is sour as well. So um, you need to have the opposite. You need something, something sweet. I will add some heavy cream now. And then, I'm going to have a fine sauce. Hello Grandma, here's your version. My grandma always said, the sauce is the most important thing when you're eating salt ramen. I have some mashed apples with uh, mashed pears from my own garden. And now I will prepare my sauerbraten the way my grandma did it with mashed apples here they go there you are and uh, with heavy cream sauce and i have to cut my sauerbraten mm. i think that's going to be good let's have a look Oh, this is so soft. This is really, really soft. Mmm. Great. See how juicy that is. All right. Here we are. There we go. That's the perfect consistency. I'm a little bit proud because I made a good job. This really works out perfectly. It's a good recipe. Alright, some sauce. And surprise, surprise, it comes with dumplings. There we are. All right, guys, that is original German Sauerbraten, especially in the way my grandma always served it to me and the way I love it. I hope you try it at home because it's worth it. You will love it, I'm sure. Let me know if you like it. Leave a comment, please, okay? Okay, I have to test this now. Normally, sauerbraten is being served with potato dumplings, of course, plus with um, red cabbage. You can get a recipe for red cabbage on my channel too, of course. Mm. Oh, that's excellent. Mm. It is so soft and tender, you don't need a knife for it. And it has this great sour flavor and it's fruity, it's rich, it's wonderful. One of the best ways how you can have uh, beef. If you like my recipes, subscribe my channel please, okay? And tell your friends about it maybe. And I would be lucky if you try this at home, uh, if you leave me a comment afterwards. If it worked out for you right and if you liked it. Mm. And I hope to see you soon again, okay? Enjoy your meals. Mm.